Welcome to Four Kids Flashback. Hello, welcome to Four Kids Flashback Talk Back. This is a show where we listen to your messages that you have left for us, uh, whether it be like a question or a comment about four kids, and uh, we respond. And today we have a very, 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 uh, very times a Google special guest. Who? A Google? Is it Google? A, a, a petabyte? I don't know. A pet? Wait, a uh, petabyte? That's like bigger than a terabyte. It is? Yeah, apparently it's a new thing. You probably recognize his voice already. His <laughs> name is Darren Dunstan. Dunstan, Dunstan, Dunstan. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so we're hoping to be the next Regis and Kelly, obviously. Um, I'm Kelly. <laughs> Darren is wearing a shirt that... Oh, just describe your shirt because it's so good. It's... um. It was not for free, although I, I wish it was. Um, it's a Pegasus <laughs> shirt, just a shot of his eyes, and it's, like, bedazzled. And I, I when you see me stroking my chest here, Tara, it's not <laughs> like that. It's literally, it's, like, yes, I, it's, it's so texturally exciting. It's, like, well, oh, my gosh. I see so many of the You guys who are listening know, like, all these anime shirts that just have the eyes. I love those, but it's the fact that it's bedazzled. That's yeah. special. It's another level. Do you remember that? Wasn't someone like bedazzling Funkos and stuff? And I yes. wanted one so badly. And I hinted and hinted and, and they didn't uh, get they, they, they take those they take like so many hours to do that. Like it's meticulous work. But With, see, like, I would or... want to do that. Like if you give like <laughs> Darren and I <laughs> Darren and I have could be a good some project. shared interests. Like I feel like that would be a fun arts and crafts interest. Like if we had golden girls on in the background <laughs> and we sat with like our little um Swarovski crystals to put onto the Funko Pop. I'm gonna bring a blanket to the Hollywood Cemetery because we're going there and we're gonna lie <laughs> lie there and bedazzle uh Mokuba. <laughs> <laughs> or bulba, Mo- whatever. Mocha, but does not have a Funko Pop. Why would you rub Ooh, that in? Sore Why subject. would you find take Awkward. this moment? To- <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just I'm staring at all my Funkos right now. Hey, you, you are. Oh, I can't see. If anyone uh, listening works for Funko, we'd appreciate if you could make them of mostly our care. Oh, he's hold. Oh, Darren's just showing off now, holding. Maybe we'll have <laughs> to we'll have to take a screenshot of the video from this. Okay, uh, sorry about this noise. Oh, oh. Oh, so unprofessional. Edit uh, that and post. Before we get to our first message, if you guys at home want to leave a message uh, for Four Kids Flashback, uh, a memory of Four Kids, get your questions answered, whatever, uh, you can leave it at speakpipe.com slash Four Kids Flashback. Uh, and check out our social media at uh, Four Kids Flashback, and you can find links to all that stuff. So our first message is from Malik. We will play that for you right now. This is Malik chiming in from Canada. Just wanted to say you guys are doing great work on the podcast, getting voices that we otherwise would never hear from, so you guys are using your powers for good. Four Kids has been a part of my life since I was a kid. Up in Canada, a lot of their shows aired on YTV, which actually co-produced Viva Pinata, but I also saw a lot of it on the Fox Box, 4Kids TV, and even the CW 4Kids slash Toons Eye. I was probably the reason that block stayed on the air for as long as it did. But you guys at 4Kids, notably the actors, helped inspire my own passion for voice acting and really jump-started that part of my career. And I've even gotten to speak with slash make friends with a few of the voices behind the shows, and you're all simply delightful. For a favored memory, watching Turtles Forever on the CW4 Kids during what they called Popcorn for Breakfast. At the time, I didn't have satellite, but my grandparents did. I was there on the perfect weekend, and that may have jump-started my love for the Turtles. It's great hearing everyone share their stories, and I can't wait to hear more. Small request, if you speak with Amy Birnbaum again, ask her if she voiced a character called Nisha in the first Pokemon movie. She had a Blastoise named Shellshocker. I spoke with Michael Hegney, and he thinks it's her, but if you can, that'd be great. Anyways, keep up the great work, guys. Thank you, Malik. Oh, so, so Darren, you obviously know why I picked this to play for you first. I mean, he's from my home and native land. (laughs) Oh, Um, Canada. Boop-a-doop-a-doo. He has a great voice, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very warm on the... Does he have a good mic, do you think, too? Like, it sounded really great. Malik, let us know what mic you're using. Nice. Um, 
before I forget, yes, I yeah. checked with Amy Birnbaum. She did she did definitely play that character. She checked for me. It is Aww. on IMDb, so that is something IMDb got right. So uh <laughs> that's the I first that. part. Yeah. Aww. I can totally sympathize with um him figuring out like what network it airs on cuz like my mom would always ask and like she she wasn't going to watch it <laughs> ever right, right. but you know she'd always be like oh do we get that show here and I'd be like yeah let me look it up and it would be like YTV or some other random network that that isn't in the US okay. but they brokered some deal with um in Canada so it was constantly But like, he did yeah. say that they had the Fox box so that's why I'm confused because if if they had Fox Box there. Oh, this. So when that mm. was a thing, that was easy because everything was together. Is that correct? Yeah, and like depending on where you live in Canada, you you do get a bunch of American channels. Like we, okay, you know, we could uh, we could tune into like the Buffalo Station or whatever in Toronto and listen, you know, watch Friends on NBC, or we could watch it on you know CTV or CBC or whatever Canadian network it also broadcast on, okay. and they would all be at different times. So you, we would you check know, our TV guides and see. Check your oh, when they were like paper, and you'd like sit yes, next to I the. Loved it. No, wait. Oh this is God. so. St- so you got TV? Did you get TV guide in Canada? Uh, I it was it can, no it came I think you could maybe at a news at like a grocery store but we you'd use Star Week so the Toronto Star would have Star Week which was just like okay. a bigger magazine but but same thing. Okay, and you have, and you all have those flappy heads, like in South Park, right? Am I right about that? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to understand what people are saying sometimes because it's like <laughs> that's, <laughs> how, that's how the Canadians speak in South Park. Yeah, I love the I love the detail of like the different channels and going to your grandparents' house yes. and, because, and like that they had a certain channel. They had satellite. <laughs> Turtles I think you forever. Oh. Yeah, there was there was a lot in there, Malik. I I love that you watched all these shows, and I don't know. I, I love hearing these these stories because we have. I mean, you and I probably have our stories of what we watched when we were totally. It, it's like the we were the Muppet Babies of our. Like, I new loved Muppet Babies. Me too. I was thinking and, about that just the other day. Oh. I loved the legs of the nanny, the of the caregiver. <laughs> <laughs> I loved like that. striped striped socks or something, or did they make maybe? That up? I just love that mm. you just never saw them, and like I love that yeah. premise in a lot of, in shows in general, when someone's right. a disembodied voice, <laughs> <laughs> and probably like never, no other show or food do I associate more with like car- morning cartoons and cereal, just like sugary. Uh, right, I, but he mentioned the popcorn for breakfast, and it got <laughs> me thinking that I kind of would like to have popcorn for breakfast. I don't remember that promotion. Right. Is that you guys listening? Is that a promotion you guys remember? Hmm. Um. Do you remember, remember. It, Darren? You don't remember no. that. No. No, but uh, I do love popcorn, so. Yeah, and it's, I feel like that's a healthy breakfast food, actually. One of my actors today had a chicken salad sandwich for breakfast, and I was like, Ugh. and he's like, what? It's a breakfast. And I'm like. It's not a breakfast. My, <laughs> my stomach can't do that. that I made a morning. new breakfast for myself today because I. Uh, whatever if it's boring but i made rice and egg and scrambled eggs together and i mixed them up and it was delicious That's like brown healthy. rice cuz i wanted something like healthyish yeah and you're avoiding like you know flour and wheat and all that stuff. That's that's smart. I was very proud. You guys can. Uh, we've lost half of our listeners uh, right now. So we're gonna night, go everyone. to the ne- we're gonna go to the next question. This is again very uh, appropriate for Darren. Here we have a call from Mariana. I hope I'm saying that right. Hey, four kids flashback. This is Mariana. Uh, listening to this podcast has been absolute uh, fun for me for these past couple of months. I do have a question uh, if you guys plan on interviewing Darren Dunstan again. Uh, So, uh, Darren, I have three questions regarding your experience of Pokemon Live. Uh, What was your favorite city to perform in? What was the least favorite thing you experienced uh, with the tour? Or what, what is one thing you didn't like during the tour? And who was your favorite cast member to work with in Pokemon Live? So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, good luck with the rest of the show. Looking forward to new episodes. Bye. Mariana, that was a lovely message. And yes. luckily we have D the Dunstan right here. Whenever whenever <laughs> you write Darren T. Dunstan, I always think the T is for the. <laughs> the Dunstan. <laughs> Darren the Dunstan. So, okay, so it's a, it was a three-parter. So the first yeah. was... 
was favorite city. I love these questions. You made mm-hmm. me think and, you know, harken back to what, 24 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to say my favorite. I mean, we played my hometown. We played Toronto, which was great. And why, tr- you know, seeing the family, all that stuff. But also when we had an odd number of cast members. And so whenever, if you were in your hometown, you got your own hotel room. Ooh. That was like the rule. So, Did yeah. You- so. This is a weird question. Did you have someone who was always your roommate or did you switch roommates in every city? We always had the same roommate. And if we weren't, if we were in a city that no one, you know, was from, this one certain person got, got their, always got their own room. And, but then if it was your hometown, boom, you get your mm. own room. So I had my own hotel room downtown Toronto. It was very exciting. But, and I think my favorite place, and this is a weird answer, right after the holidays, we went, you know, we all got a, a, a few days off for Christmas. And then we immediately flew to Milwaukee. And it was cold and like January and all that stuff. And um, my roommate and I went to the Gap and we bought uh, matching slippers. And it was just the like coziest. And frankly, I think I still have those slippers. I don't wear them, but I I think they're here somewhere. Um, Yeah. And it was just like the coziest. I remember watching all the Oscar nominated movies in my hotel room, renting Gladiator for like $12.99 on the, the hotel television and watching the Golden Globes where Elizabeth Taylor was out of her gourd and like, Gladiator. (laughs) <laughs> Were there um, big differences between cities in, like, the type of audience it brought in? Like, were you able to – or was it – because it was a young audience, was it pretty, like, much the same city to city? Yeah, I'd say the audiences were pretty similar. I mean, what what was different were, like, the, the types of venues. Like, they really went for big, big venues. So if a, yeah. if a city had a really huge – auditorium like in Toronto we played the Hummingbird Center which was where all the like touring Broadway shows would go through but in mm-hmm. certain cities we would play like an arena you know like oh um, like right after Sting performed you'd be it would be like <laughs> Sting live then you, Pokemon live <laughs> you make it sound better <laughs> more glamorous than it was like Indianapolis did you do you, did we do that signing together last year in Indianapolis no at, I don't at the state think fair so. No, no, no! I wasn't there. The state fairgrounds, and we we back in Pokemon Live, we played the Indiana Indianapolis State Fairgrounds hockey rink auditorium thing, and it was like this teeny little attic was our dressing room. And so you're competing with like pig racing for their attention. (laughs) (laughs) Smelled like hay, yeah. (laughs) So would that go under your least favorite part of the tour? Is the hay smelling dressing room? (laughs) (laughs) I think that might be it. Also, at at Radio City, um, where the show started. Um, we would have four show days Ooh. and like my track wasn't too bad. Like I, you know, I had like, when he says track, that's a very theater speak for that, mm. your role. And like, th- but yeah. we call it a track in theater for some reason. Yeah, totally. And just sort of the breakdown of like, how many scenes do you have? How often do you have time off stage? Do you have multiple songs? You know, are they high? Um, anyways, but, but like people like the lead, like, um, like Dom, like f- to do what he was doing for, four shows like a show at 10 a show at one Ooh. a show at four and a show at seven um and the show is over two hours so um it's like turn around four and hit... shows yeah so that that was i mean it, it was still a thrill to to be there and like you know we we were so was young the show, that we didn't know. was it like an i'm trying to remember the running time was it like an hour and a half that show i mean or was it a f- i think it was over two hours honestly what yeah, that's a lot too, for four shows. Nice. That's too much for four shows a day. Yeah. Yeah, it it was. I felt like a rocket. You didn't have like quick changes though, right? Because you wore that swanky suit. Oh, we should say for those of you who don't know, there was a show called Pokemon Live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, that uh, what in the year two thousand nine? What what year yeah, was just it? Two thousand into two thousand one. Yeah. Yeah, and Darren before he was working at Four Kids played Giovanni in this live musical production yeah, yeah. of Pokemon. Like when we talked last time, so yeah, I had I was a trainer right at the very beginning, and then I had a quick change oh, into right. my suit, and then wore my regular suit for most of the show, and then at the end, spoiler alert, he like gets blown up basically, and so they <laughs> bought a a second suit, a three thousand dollar Armani suit. They bought a second nice. one and ripped it and put <gasps> you know, burnt it, and like so he looked um, you know roasted. Oh, so he doesn't die, but like you see the effects of him getting blown up. Okay. His um his machine, his special was it Mecha Mewtwo or something, um, blows up, and so he's kind of there with Aww. it. And and I asked to I asked if I could keep the suit, the the good suit, <laughs> not mm-hmm. the blow up. Yes, suit. of course. Um, yeah. 
And there I'd was some both. talk, and eventually they were like, no, we're putting it all in storage just in case we were to do the show again. We have to. I, I forgot the answer to this question. Um, you didn't do the entire tour, though, did you? Because didn't it go to a couple cities after you left, like Dubai or? Yeah, I, I think up? Dubai is the only one I, I can remember. But um, yeah, so I, you know, we had the choice of after at the end of the uh, Nash, the uh, North American run to, to do this Dubai thing. And I think only a couple cast members decided so to go. So they maybe the still was... needed the suit for that. That's why That's I was asking. Probably yeah, true. they probably. Yeah. So yeah. I love that that maybe in casting they were like, we don't want to buy a new suit. Let's find someone exactly the same size as Darren to play <laughs> oh, this role. And the suit, they were like, oh, we're going to get a suit a lot bigger than you because we want it to look. We want you to look more intimidating. Because Giovanni, oh. he's, he's a broad-shouldered man, and like in two thousand, especially, I was. <laughs> so you had sho- like shoulder pads and stuff in there. Yeah, like it was like a few sizes too small, and like yeah, it was like I was <laughs> B. Arthur definitely wearing that thing. So I should have, I should have cinched the bot the bottom so it would be like, I'd be like a gorgeous like swimmer's build, but I didn't think of that. Ooh. Next oh, well. next time you go on tour with Pokemon Live, you'll do that. Oh, the third <laughs> part of your question was uh, uh, Mariana oh, favorite. was favorite cast member. I mean, listen, favorite we don't like member. to pick favorites here, but if you had to, gun to your head. <laughs> um, I would choose Dominic, the, the lead, uh, who, who I just mentioned prior. No, I'd love everyone, but like I was so um, admiring what he was doing first mm-hmm. of all like he had a really it, it, you know if you asked him now he might he probably would say it was one of the sort of the heavier things he's he's ever done as far as like yeah it's carrying vocal, the show yeah yeah and pretending you're a 10 year old boy when he was you know f- fresh out of college and that's the other factor that that i loved about him we both graduated um from the same school we lived together in new york and then we got the gig together we left mm-hmm. town together like it was it was kind of a cool exciting experience that we both had in synchronicity yeah oh i like that thank yeah. you so much that was a great question mariana we appreciate that um our next question is from, we're going to call this person MW. Here is M-Dubs. the question from MW. Woo! Hey guys, I really love your podcast. I enjoy hearing these stories from cast and crew and what it was like to work on these four kids shows and all the crap that happened in the office and stuff. I think that's really neat. Um, I grew up watching Pokemon mainly from four kids, so four kids did raise me in that aspect, and I had tons of uh, VHS tapes back when VHS was a thing that had about three or four episodes on each VHS, I think. Wish I still had them. Anyways, now I'm re-watching Pokemon on Netflix right now, and I'm wondering, do you remember working with some of these other actors that are credited that I don't hear talked about much, like Lebozo, um, Mandy Bonholm, uh, Eric Taylor, names like that I don't really recognize, but apparently they must have done some voices in Pokemon and such. So, yeah, I was wondering about that. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, Jerry Lebozo, I believe, was um, a musician there. Like, he did music. Is that, do you remember that, Darren? Hey, Tara, jumping in here. I was totally wrong. Jerry Lebozo was not in the music department. I was confusing him with someone else. Just clarifying that. Now back to the show. I remember him uh, as an actor, too, like, doing, being, being around and, like, super high energy guy. And, like, yeah, everyone, you know, knew him at the office and he... Um, you know, some some actors would stay in their lane and just get to know like the immediate staff, and some people would like wander over to cubicles and like, hey, mm-hmm. yeah. and he was one of those, uh, which was kind of cool. And I remember, uh, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn, but like I remember one of his headshots. I think I'm pretty sure he was dressed like Jesus. Like he did a he had like a Jesus headshot. Does that? Oh, ring oh, a that's to interesting. You? No, I don't. Re- honestly, I don't remember him. I am I mistaking that he was in the music department? Am I confusing him with someone else? Maybe. I mean, he might he might have done some singing. I I I don't know. Oh no, but he wasn't like on actor. staff. Okay, so okay, no. so you remember Jerry Lebozo? I remember uh-huh. Mandy Benam. Do you remember Mandy Benam? Yes, I remember. Um, I don't think we ever like actually worked together, but we met and you know she auditioned and for me and stuff. So yeah, she was she was lovely. Fun fact: and- I remember that her last name meant snowman. 
Yes, bonhomme de neige. I remember her uh, telling us that. I didn't know her well either. She wasn't someone I ran into a lot. No, no, I don't. I don't think I. I. I all these people, I'm like, where are they now? And Eric Taylor, that name's kind of familiar, but um, but I can't place it. Do you? No, that one. I. Can that's you? a name I don't know. And again, a lot of people use pseudonyms back then. Uh, Right. For various reasons, um, some people like were just figuring out what stage name they wanted to use, uh, or whatever <laughs> for whatever reason people use pseudonyms. Uh, there's multiple yeah. reasons. Um, After so this, I'll, I'll dig through been... my emails. Usually, sometimes I do an email search to be like Eric Taylor and, and okay. figure out how I know them that way. Sometimes, um, if some people might just randomly send me an audio clip and be like, "Is this?" You know, I'll be like, um, "Yeah, that's Boo Boo Boo." Boo Boo Boo. You loved working with Boobaloo, Boobalabaloo, Boo Boo. <laughs> their work, I'm not sure how they spelled their name, but it, they, they were solid. Yeah, their, their uh, well, reacts were great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that message. Our next message is from Wayne. Wayne. What I remember, Tara, is that you're my favorite voice actress, Love You is Kyrie, but I remember for kids at UEO. Yu-Gi-Oh! was one of my favorite shows growing up when I was six or seven, decided to be a voice actor. I loved all the battles. I loved Mokuba. He was so cool that he voiced. I loved all the funny moments with the Yu-Gi and the gang a lot. And Pokemon was another one. Richie and, you know, I loved all the battles with everything. But if I had to choose, I would choose Yu-Gi-Oh! It's great. Both of you, well, Terry, you had to be part of these series just growing up. Coming home from school, watching and crying. You know, I always wanted a brother like Kaiba. I wanted ever saw that got to me is when Kaiba threw Mokuba in the um, Zeppelin, I think it was, or a plane. And it was so funny. He's like, here, catch. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> but yeah, Four Kids was really a special movie because they had Sonic with Lisa Ortiz and Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh! But a lot of stuff. What I did not like is like in Japan how they showed Yu-Gi-Oh with the like the gun scene with Kaiba being held gunpoint. So there were a lot of deleted scenes or whatever that was not making into the show. But I like how it set the pace and everything and everything. I like it. So yeah, my favorite. You're my favorite voice actor. Taking acting classes and hopefully become a voice actor. I'm not jealous that you're his favorite voice actor, but... Uh... Well, he did. Uh, in all fairness, that message was left before I announced that you would be joining I'm me kidding. for this uh, journey. You um, are wonderful. If you weren't great, I'd be rolling my eyes right now. <laughs> just kidding. You, Darren, uh, listen, Darren's just stormed out of the booth. This is uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you, Wayne. That's so sweet. Um when I heard your message the other day, I, I love that you want a brother like Seto Kaiba because I was like, is that yeah. good or bad? And then I started <laughs> thinking about TV brothers that I would want. Oh, did any yeah. come to mind? Yes. And wait, I have. give me a second because I, t- I had one and I have to remember who it was. Like, I don't think I'd want um, Mike Seaver from Growing Pains. Um, uh, I don't know about Jonathan from Who's the Boss. He was just sort of like, I was a Jonathan. I was like the little Oh, you were the jo- you were the. Meal. Okay. Fucking Samantha. Yeah. Uh, I mean, else? Seto is a good brother. He, you know, in terms of like, I feel like that relationship with Seto and Mokuba, I always say this like, gives Seto huma- gives Seto Kaiba. Wait, why am I saying that weird? Gives Seto <laughs> humanity. Um, yeah, it was it, a good idea for them. Yeah, to, it was smart. To give him that to play off of. And like, you know, they put little family members in there, like. Joey having his sister, you yeah. having his grandpa, Pegasus having his his comic books. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, I know who I was thinking, and it's not from a show. It's that <laughs> I want Phineas of like Billy Eilish's brother, <laughs> Phineas, to be my brother because I love their relationship so much. Yes. If you guys know what I'm talking about, you see, like they write music together. He like looks like her protector. Mm-hmm. Did you He's watch so them on cute. the Grammys? Yes, I, I, they were so yeah. cute. And just like they're, they, they they barely needed to look at each other during the performance, but like he was supporting her and like singing back up and not too loud, but not too soft. And like, yeah. uh, you could tell she respected his musicianship. And that's a uh, cool, yeah. Yeah, that's what I, that like, was what I thought of. Yeah, imagine just like sitting in your room and like recording 
songs with your sibling. With and your then... sibling, yeah. Well, and Three she, things. like, calls him her best friend, which is so nice. Like, listen, I know that mm. doesn't happen with every sibling, really. I'm an only child. I should I should actually explain. I'm an only child, so I'm envious <laughs> of, like, all sibling relationships. Right. Um. Yeah. But My sister and I had that, you know, like, I, I was the bratty younger brother, and, you know, she didn't really want to, like, you know, or she was mm-hmm. cooler than that. But, but yeah, then, then you get to a really great place, you know, where you're equals and... Well, well, yeah, uh, after a certain age, it's like, all right, we can be done fighting over a toy and maybe have a conversation, <laughs> I guess. I'm What's your angry. age difference with your sister? Uh, just two and a half years. Oh, that's she's, good. Uh, she's yeah. older. Everyone thinks she's younger, so that's annoying. But, um, uh, yeah, and she has three kids, and, um, yeah, it's a good relationship. I wish we, I saw them more just because they're in Canada. Yeah. Uncle here. Darren. Do they Uncle call you Darren. Uncle? Uncle De- oh, they're, they, that's what they sound like? Again. Were you going to do like a baby voice? Because they're like 19, <laughs> 17. I know. 15. I imagine them being like, Uncle Dallin, come play with me. Yeah, they still talk like that. It's weird. <laughs> That's so weird. That's called Canada. Um, but Wayne, yeah. thank you so much for saying nice things. You don't have to do that to get your message played. It doesn't hurt. Mm. But yeah, I loved the sibling part of that question. Uh, a brother like Seto, man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yep. Careful what you wish for. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, Eric Stewart and I have a very bro relation. He, you know, we call each other bro. It's very cute. Uh, you two are similar, too, just in your, like, I don't know, you're, especially, like, when we're at a con or whatever, you all are very buttoned up. You're often the, the spokesperson. Or, you really? Know, you a lot of, yeah. That's how you think. That's funny. That's not how I think of me at all. Oh, you come, yeah, I think you're very. Like, professional, like, you mean? I, that's a strong word. But. <laughs> <laughs> like a, buttoned up. I feel like I'm so like such a loose cannon when I'm talking. Yeah, but I'm the one who like, oh, we didn't get our per diem. Okay. <laughs> he's yeah, like, oh, like he's that. Like, did I eat? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't eat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's why I think you mean like I'm on top of stuff, but that's just yeah. type A. Well, yeah, Eric and I are both very type A like that. Yeah. Like we know I'm type what... A sometimes when it just in, like when I'm working, when I'm you know directing. Yeah, when you're like... directing, yeah. I'm extremely, yeah, but otherwise I'm a little bit of a <laughs> loose goose. <laughs> a loosey goosey. Um, thank you, Wayne, again. Uh, our next message is from someone named Dizzy. Here you go. Hey there. My name's Dizzy, and I have a bit of a memory of a four kids show. When I was in middle school, we had bred some monarch butterflies, and on that same day, We were getting ready to release them. And by coincidence, an episode of Pokemon, Bye Bye Butterfree, aired, in which Ash's Butterfree goes off to find his true love. And so every time I watch that episode, I think of the monarch butterflies that we were taking care of. And that was by sheer coincidence. So I guess you can say... That meant a lot to me growing up. Aww. I know. That's such an awe. It's sweet, right? Oh, my um, gosh. When, when shows have, like, strike that deep level, like, you don't, yes. sometimes you don't see that coming. You're like, oh, we're doing the Butterfree episode. And it's and the then... same day as, that's what <laughs> yeah. I really was thinking about. And I started thinking, when I heard this, I started thinking about those shows in my life. Do you have, mm. I have a few. Do you have, like, where, where something happened on a show the same time it happened in my life? Oh, like when you got struck by lightning that one time? Yes, or? that's right. Well, no, like uh, there was an episode of Sex and the City where she has jury duty and it aired the same week I had jury duty. And I was like, oh, oh my God. No way. Um, it was so <laughs> cheesy. Like 90210, I, something happened like the same, it was the same time. And I was like, Life's, <gasps> my life is imitating the show. Um, Your but- toilet broke when Dorothy and Rose <laughs> decide to fix it themselves. and then, Always you know, a Golden Girls are. reference. But I think it <laughs> things like that, like shows stay with you in a different way and especially then when your life mirrors that show. So I so understand that butterfly thing for you. Mm. That it, absolutely. There's a movie. Um, what's the, the movie about um, voiceovers? Is it with Lake Bell? Oh, In a World. I never watched it because I, I, I'm a little scared to. It's great. It, it's a great movie. It, yeah. But is it going to be like our lives on the screen kind of thing? Or? No, because it's like whenever a movie is made about a career, it's never like exactly like the career. But there's always 
little moments where you're like, oh, yeah, that's accurate. Um, But it's a good enough movie that you can have those and also see it as a great. It's it's just she's really good in it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I do sometimes when there's a a slightly more serious plot line, like, like even when, you know, serenity and not having her vision and that sort of thing like i did kind of register i think at the time that like this this could touch people um, right not to sound like a love for your sister thing or an empathy thing but like you know people who have challenges people who have disabilities like um that it could it touches on that i think in an effective way whether the show initially intended to or not yeah i mean and i think that's why like (laughs) i never really understand parents who ban all television because i think when art imitates life there's a less there's lessons to be learned in it and sometimes see the visual of that and seeing in the good television Mm -hmm. like i understand if parents ban their kids from watching terrible violent you know or or shows where kids are mean to adults and there's there's definitely shows in there that like i understand not letting your kid watch but there's lessons in these shows that i don't know that a parent can teach just by talking to their kid so i yeah, it's, uh, you know, yeah. I know. I sometimes I joke that like you know, t- TV's educational, even even like you know more garbage TV. But and and as people, you know, kids of the '80s, if I can ad- admit that we grew up in the '80s, <laughs> um, you know, number one, a lot of episodes of sitcoms were you know were learning one to grow on the more you yeah that was a that was a thing yeah you guys are young to know this but like there they would be billed as a very special episode (laughs) right but but, right one to grow on yeah sex or and yet you know back in the 80s it was an even more conservative time where like yes this episode's about sex but like they didn't even say the word sex so there were ways they sort of addressed it or even the the, dare i say the golden girls were like there'll be you know there was an aids episode Right. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure I went to my mom like, you know, what <laughs> what what is AIDS? What is what does she mean by Jezebel or you know like right. the, the most ran why why can't uh, Murray Gutman go to the country club? Like I I'm sure there was <laughs> these learning are deep, These are deep cuts you guys. <laughs> but like important um themes, you know? The one that stayed with me was on different strokes when Arnold and his friend got like kidnapped oh. by that guy. Yeah, that yes. was heavy. That was uh... Blech. All right, yeah. but Dizzy, that was such a sweet message. I love your butterfree and butterfly story. That is beautiful. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Our next message is from Alex. P. Keaton, Family Ties. Hello to the Four Kids Flashback crew. My name is Alex Caswell. I'm from the UK, and I'm an avid fan of voice actors and just the voiceover industry in general. So as a massive fan of the New York talent pool and both the Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! franchises, I really enjoy this podcast a lot, especially with the voice actor interviews where they're able to tell so many different sort of stories, whether it's the good, the bad, or even stuff that I never knew about. Now, if there's one story that I do have, is that aside from Pokemon, which was around the TPCI Taj era when I got into the anime, I do vaguely remember watching Dinosaur King, one that used to air on the CITV channel, which no longer exists now since it shot last year. And it's still crazy to think that Veronica Taylor and Rachel Lillis basically played the same characters that they used to play on Pokemon. So with Veronica, she voiced the Ash-type character, was one of the main leads, and then Rachel's character was part of Team Alpha, was essentially Jesse from Team Rocket. So that, that was honestly really cool to think about. Uh, you know, it always makes me happy to see the New York VAs get to be part of other anime outside of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, like with Pluto, with Erica, Schro- Erica Schroeder and Mark Thompson and Mike Pollock. And then with Prince of Tennis, you got Wayne Grayson, Daniel J. Edwards, Jake Pegg, all that sort of stuff. And then Gundam and Sound Condenser stuff. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to when you interview uh, both Wayne Grayson and Mark Thompson because they're really fantastic people. And yeah, keep up the good work with this really great podcast. Bye. You know your actors, dude. Right? That was an impressive... Yeah. I feel like Alex could be in casting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know everyone. That or... well, also that British accent. I love it. <laughs> it goes it's a long a, way. It's a great accent. Oh. <sighs> when two two of the last people you met, uh, mentioned Wayne and Mark, just two of the most like versatile mm-hmm. voiceover. I remember, um, you know, when I was learning how to direct, I'd sit in with um, Eric, who was directing. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh, Eric Stewart. It, yeah. Right. And I knew that Wayne played um, Joey, but he was also playing Shadi, I think was the name. Oh, I don't know. Okay. 
And it was just such an eye-opening moment. It was just so crazy, unrecognizably different than his other character. And I, it really sort of clued me into, oh, I, I should probably stri- strive for that versatility <laughs> too. Right. Well, and both of those guys, well, first of all, the, our episode with Mark will be out by the time uh, you hear this. So I hope you've enjoyed that interview with Mark Thompson. The and best. Wayne's will be out shortly. But... Uh, did Mark mention me? Did he? Did he? Tons. He talked constantly. Name. Talked. <laughs> no. uh, but uh, Darren, you do get mentioned on the podcast a lot. But uh, yes. like both stuff. of those guys, and, and I'll say this about our friends in general: we don't go around doing funny voices for each other. So a lot no. of the times, we don't even know how talented some of our friends are. <laughs> there are actors who who do that where they're like in mid conversation will start doing funny voices like, at you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's kind not. of not our thing. So no. <laughs> I'm so pleasantly surprised when I hear my friends in something. And I'm like, you can do that? <laughs> <laughs> Mark is insane. Mark I, uh, Mark is one of the only people that I've worked with constantly since I started directing till now. Because he's always got a new voice up right. his sleeve. It's always like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, you've auditioned for like the, the eighth old man character and I'm a little skeptical and then I'm like that's brilliant <laughs> he's the yeah. one you know he's yeah. so good and and mm-hmm. when asked on this show like who they look up to a lot of more than one person has said Mark Thompson I'm yeah. um, sorry sorry Darren uh no but- I, I I bow to him because um yeah and he works hard too like uh, he mm-hmm. wanted it so bad I remember at the very beginning when he was playing Duke and then Ultimate Muscle and stuff and like he, he just he puts in the work he works on new voices he um, yeah he's extremely he's that rare combination of like um buttoned up um organ relatively organized administratively reliable yes. you know and also yes. super talented that's often well, a rare combination a good guy too like I, you know we've said this before on this podcast and on panels all the time i'm like a lot of getting hired again is is being a likable human being mm-hmm. and, and reading the room like if it's if mm-hmm. if the tone in the room that day is is funny and happy be funny and happy if you can tell maybe they're stressed out maybe don't make as many jokes and like you know the people that we're talking about and who work consistently understand this totally um i i uh, you know maybe 10 years ago i set out this private goal to always work with uh people whose company i enjoy you know what i mean and occasionally Mm -hmm. you know you you're working with someone you don't quite click with or you just you know maybe their humor is different than yours or whatever and that's that's okay but um you know i think the most recent Yu-Gi-Oh series Yu-Gi-Oh sevens was just like this uh, it sort of reinvigorated me it was just chock full of of a cast of just like lovable people and i don't know it just sort of like um I don't know if it, it reads in the work. I like to hope it does, you know, when you're watching it. I'm you're sure like, oh, it does. Feels... How can it not? Yeah. Yeah, it's fresh and funny and positive And, like, I want that, you know, in the show and also as we're, you know, recording it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Anyway, sorry, uh, thank you, sorry Alex. Sorry so off topic, Alex. No, but... no, we, we digress. Uh, and you mentioned Dino King, uh, which we really – that is a show we have not talked a ton about on the podcast. Mm. What was – Darren, what was your involvement with Dino King? Um, I really liked it. It was um, it was after Pokemon, and yet it was the same team that did Pokemon, like the same producer, um, mm-hmm. associate producer, you know, PAs, uh, me directing, um, and and like Alex mentioned, uh, a number of the cast members were the same. So you know the the scripts were always really really polished. Um, yeah, yeah, it had like some sort of. Um, uh, Pokemon parallels to yeah. it, you know, but it was dinosaur related, which was like, was and still is, you know, pretty super hot. Um, yeah, dinosaurs frankly, are always <laughs> are always hot. <laughs> I learned a lot about dinosaurs too in, in the course of the series. I knew nothing, and we're like, that a pad of what? A pad of so- okay, You're basically um, a paleontologist at this point. Yeah, let's be I, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and a cool cast, and like you know, the people you mentioned, Veronica. Um, Rachel, Eric, but then some cool additions like Dave Wills played this like really dopey guy. Eric played, you know, this like crazy old professor, like this like scratchy voiced high. <laughs> I know I just did a voice start. Um, yeah, no, it, this it was. was a- that, it's an example. I that I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, you know what else was cool? One last thing about it was um they traveled to real locations. You know, like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh take place in kind of imaginary yes, places. Right. In Dinosaur King, they would go like we're going to Barcelona. We're going to yeah, and we'd see. Oh, like, I like that. 
the um yeah we'd see the tourist attractions throughout the episode and that sort of thing which is cool i like that too because then it gives kids like who want to travel and see other places and, and also teaches them how to pronounce other places which i totally. kind of like yeah totally, like there's a yeah. lot of pronunciations i know just from watching tv mhm and now yeah, like, I, I can't think of a good example now but yeah oh no i mean i my, you know all all my my magical spanish is from dora <laughs> dora the, yeah yeah. <laughs> I get it. Wait, but you didn't grow up watching Dora. Uh, no. Did you work on Dora? But I've seen Dora? it. Oh, you've my seen niece. it. My niece. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, With one of the niece. nieces whose voice I did earlier. Yeah. <laughs> when I bought her a Dora chair when she was five. <laughs> Our next message comes to us from Coop. Woo. This is Coop from Chicago. My favorite memory from Four Kids was watching the Wings Club. Even though I missed it from coming on at 7 a.m., it was on Xfinity On Demand, so I was able to catch up with the episodes. I was very upset when the third season was set to be his last, and then Nickelodeon brought it back with a whole new cast. Y'all should get some of the four kids cast that don't do voice work anymore, like OG Bloom, Lisa Copeland. She don't voice act anymore, but she switched careers. And you should get like Vasty Moonpoint on the podcast. Yeah, you know, Winx Club is a, a like kind of a blind spot for me, I'll be honest. Um, Darren, you might know these actors better than I do. Uh, but yeah, I I, I know. Um, I don't think I ever worked with Vasti. Uh, I definitely worked with uh, Liza on. Uh, she did a role on Turtles, and then uh, what Pokemon probably, and and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And she was actually my neighbor. We we lived. We always would see each Aww. other in, in the hood. Um, yeah, super. Su- both of them super talented. Vasti, I think, is a, a Broadway person, like extremely. Yeah, I just started um, following her on Instagram, and she looks like she's working all the time. So. I think I, I was about to say I never worked on Winx. I think I worked on it a little bit. Um, and it's funny that I think Coop mentioned that it was like the 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> slot, which which is tricky. And like I, I knew nothing about the, the programming of the Fox box or whatever. Like, was it from 7 to 12, I think, maybe? That I don't um, even remember so. any. I Gosh, you guys remember yeah. better than I do at home. Oh yeah, we like they would strategically shuffle stuff around and like, oh, we're gonna try Kirby in the eight eight a.m. slot, and then we'd look at the again the number the ratings numbers, which I didn't really comprehend. I kind of learned to stop looking at them because, you know, when they're good, they're good. When they're not good, it's disheartening. Well, and if Um, you're not in charge of that part of the business, it doesn't serve you. I don't think you just want to go do good work, and if it at all affects looking at ratings affects your work at all, it's not healthy. I would guess. It's better to just sort of assume, honestly, that like, oh, we're going to do one season of this show Mm -hmm. and then just like let it go. And often it takes a while, you know, especially with prelay shows where the where we record all the voices before it's animated. It's like two years later that that it airs, you know. And so by that point, you know, um, you've forgotten the show. And if it got greenlit within that time, um, great. If it gets greenlit after those two years, great. But you learn to not get your hopes up. Yeah, but I do love that you have that, Coop, that you have that specific 7 a.m. memory. I think that's very, <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Good job getting up that early. That's a, Yeah. Well, that's a I mean, as a kid, was it, yeah, I guess as a kid, you just were up, right? Like, that's were true, you, did yeah. you when did When do you start sleeping in? Like, not till you're a little bit older, right? Yeah, no. And we would, like, we were allowed to, like, get up whenever on weekends and you know, get our bowl of cereal and that sort of thing, as long as we didn't fight with each other and my parents, you know, could sleep in a bit. <laughs> See, as an only child, there was no one to fight with. And, like, uh, it's weird to f- just fight with yourself. <gasps> Did you get a whole box of cereal to yourself, though? I feel like, no, because I had, like, parents who, they wouldn't have let me, I don't think. Aww. We didn't have, like, sugar, no. We, I had, fi- my breakfast was fine, but I don't feel like I had really fun <laughs> cereal. Only on weekends. Sorry, and, guys, uh, parents, honestly, if you're listening. Yeah. It's not too late. It's not too late to buy me fun cereal, you guys. I had. I remember this. There was a strawberry shortcake cereal. There was a Pac Man mm. cereal. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Well, yeah. were you? So I. I've told this on the show before, but they made a Pokemon cereal, and Oddish, oh. one of my characters, was a marshmallow shape, and I was so excited. Like that. Ooh, did was you like, buy it? I bought it and I saved it. And my parents, and they don't remember this, when they were helping me clear out an apartment when I was in L.A. and they were in New York, they threw it out and told me it had expired. (laughs) And I was like, no, I was saving that. Oh, my gosh. I have to mention Joe Shalek, who is um, uh, (laughs) one of the sound engineers at 
Um, well, he was at Four Kids, Four Kids did a yeah. million promos, won awards for his promos. Now he's uh, at Konami. And uh, in his studio, to this day, and from 2001, there's a box of Yu-Gi-Oh! cereal. Unopened. It's still there. Tw- wow. 23 years later. Um, we're That's scared commitment. That's commitment. To look in it, we should maybe like sell it for a long. Yeah, know. well, he should uh, sell. This does not belong to you, Darren. There's no we in this uh, in this conversation, <laughs> <laughs> unless you steal it. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Our next message. I, t- I told people uh, who left messages on SpeakPipe that they were free to make up a fake name if they want. So I'm going to guess that John Riceball is not this this fellow's f- real name. But here's his message. Hi, my name is uh, John Riceball. So here is my, I guess you could say, comment. So for a couple of years now, there's been this person online. I won't say his name, but he knows who he is who has been stalking any and all videos that criticize four kids. And anytime someone comments saying something like, oh, I don't like the way four kids handled one piece or anything like that, he will send them harassment messages, threatening them with violence. I was wondering if you approve of such behavior. And if you don't, would you mind saying what you think of such inappropriate behavior? Uh, Thank you. Wow, uh, Mr. Riceball, if I can call you that. Uh, I, I'm sorry that people on online are dealing with that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Harassment in any form, obviously, we don't condone. Um, having to be scared or do, there's there's proper channels where you can report those tweets. I hope you do that. I don't want you to feel any of the repercussions, uh, results of 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 saying things about four kids like I just I, I want you guys to stay safe out there and I don't you know hopefully the bad guys don't win in this situation yeah I agree I mean there's a lot of there have been a lot of opinions you know pro four kids anti four kids all that you know and there are reasons that you know four kids had to do the things they did but like for the for the online chatter to get that um, aggressive and also in in real life there's no there's no point there's no um it doesn't help heal the issue it doesn't no. help for you to get your point across to be um aggressive or condescending or um threatening like that's you know at that's no there's no need no and, and like, listen and at yeah. the end of the day we're talking about cartoons let's let's like keep that in mind too you know <laughs> let's let's hmm. take a step back and be like all right we're talking about a form of entertainment like let's let's stop taking all of this so seriously sometimes and, and because if it mm-hmm. le- especially when it leads to this kind of harassment and obviously we don't condone that um, but right. also give yourself a break from social media once in a while because it's not healthy to be seeing all of that so I very hope... good advice. Yeah, I, I I'm not good at it though. <laughs> I'm not good at taking a break. <laughs> well, and we all you know we all correspond now through social media and text and email and that sort of thing. And like I really try to stick by the rule that like would I say exactly this to someone's face? You know what I mean? Or yeah, I think about like point. would I say this with my mother in the room? I think mm-hmm. that sometimes and like it stops me from even if I have like a, a comment that's funny but it's a little you know a bitchy zinger. It sometimes is. You know, you yeah. know, just because you have a thought doesn't mean it needs to come out of your mouth. And what would Pat think? That's my mom. Right. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, and listen, we can control ourselves, but we can't control other people. So if engaging and writing back to this individual is causing you more stress, then don't write back. Don't respond. Just let this person live their life. They're they're yeah. probably miserable. So, yeah. Exactly. So uh, sorry not... for anybody who's dealing with any of that online. Mm. Here is a message from Ryan. I watch Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of four kids. My favorite moments out of the four kids at the time. Pokemon examples are Brock saying, I will use my trust pan as a drying pan. Or Ash saying, Misty, please, one hallucination at a time. And Yu-Gi-Oh! where Joey, the dream and jokester of the characters said, 
jokes about underdogs and zoinks in the movie and the puns and jokes made the shows unique. I grew up with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Only grabbed a little bit of Kirby and has disc of Sean Jupp for Sean McKing, but that's it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I got around to watching it last year. One Piece, I watched it on sub. Needless to say that I grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and the and the um and uh the jokes, the characters, the um feelings attaching to the characters making them like alive, like um uh, uh, making us really enjoy it. The puns. <laughs> yes. Oh, the puns of I kids. love hearing this because because like <laughs> You know, in Yu-Gi-Oh, like, in the back of my brain, especially when I'm directing it, I'm like, okay, like, uh, uh, most of the time people are there for the duels. They want to mm-hmm. they want to see the monsters. The they want to Yeah, and, like, the, just the minutia of, like, you know, who wins, who loses, and why, and that sort of thing. And, um, and but there's all the, you know, there are scenes with that have the jokes. Even during the duel, there'll be puns. And, and like, mm-hmm. I, I love them, and, like, we... I love infusing humor into the show. You know, I think yeah. my producer loves a good dad joke and I love a good dry <laughs> humor thing. So between us, it's sort of like, yeah. Um, and you can't please everyone. You know, some people come to your t- our table at cons and are like, that was so dumb when that happened. You know, when you made that yeah, joke. Why are about... you making jokes when they're fighting? Yeah. Yeah. But, but I... Yeah. To hear from someone like this guy, Ryan, thank you, because yes. that does make us feel better about some of the <laughs> some of the silly stuff we do. <laughs> <laughs> right? And like I'm I'm not a dad, but I love a dad joke. Yeah. I'll tell you that. And again, these are cartoons. <laughs> right. Thank you, Ryan, for saying that cuz it I mean, listen, th- I <laughs> I feel like puns are such a hallmark of four kids shows in general, and I mm. have to give a lot of credit to Michael Hagney for that cuz I feel like he was writing it on Pokémon <laughs> from the beginning, and that yeah. is a punny punny guy. So he he is a a, a bon a, what a bon mot deliverer. Yeah. He's like he's, he's, he's Darren speaking French now, so I don't he's know. He's the Truman happening. Capote of four kids. <laughs> no, just like just like always with a witty comment and very yeah. quick on his feet. Yeah. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you guys so much for listening, Darren. Thank you Yay! for being part thank of this. Thank you. This was fun. I can't wait to uh, hear the next one. Yeah. All right, well, we will be back with more, but thank you guys for listening. And uh, if you want to leave a message for us, just go to speakpipe.com slash 4kidsflashback uh, or head to our website, 4kidsflashback.com or any of our social media. You'll find all kinds of links. Uh, Again, speakpipe.com slash 4kidsflashback with the number four. Thank you, guys. Bye. Four Kids Flashback is a production of Maji Media, hosted by Tara Sands and Steve Yurko. Producers are Zach Logan, Tara Sands, and Steve Yurko. For more information, go to fourkidsflashback.com. That is the number four. And if you worked at Four Kids and have a story you want to share, please email us at fourkidsflashback at gmail.com. You can find us on social media at Four Kids Flashback. And to listen early and ad free, head to patreon.com slash fourkidsflashback. For podcast merchandise, find links on our website and link tree. As they say on every podcast, if you liked this show, please subscribe, rate, and review, and tell your friends, or four. If you want to check out other Maji Media podcasts, go to maji, M-A-J-I, dot media. Thanks for listening.